Hello, I'm Michelle. Uh, I work here at Stripe, and my talk today is going to be about my experience with open source so far, and it's going to be told with only 10 emoticons. Um, so I maintain a WebRTC library called PeerJS, um, and this talk is not about WebRTC or PeerJS. I have a separate talk about that, and that has less emoticons. Uh, so how many of you have contributed to open source? Awesome. Uh, good for you. Uh, so how many of you guys contribute to open source? So that's less people, uh, but there's more emoticons up there because it's super exciting to contribute to open source. Uh, I also wanted to contribute to open source about a year and a half ago. Um, I wanted to party with all the cool open source folks, you know, building silly web apps was no longer fun, and I wanted to have like the street cred of having an open source library and having GitHub followers. But I was too scared to contribute. I didn't feel like I had enough domain expertise to be able to jump into a random project and start helping out. Um, to be fair, I didn't really use any real open source libraries other than like humongous projects like Django and Node.js. But all the same, I felt really small. I felt especially small when trying to look through bugs that I could potentially help fix and seeing all these domain experts talk about all their domain expertise about networking and APIs and how to best do this or that. So, I decided that if I couldn't help out with any existing library, I'd just go build my own. Um, I decided that I wanted to be a domain expert at WebRTC, which was then a really new and scary browser technology, um, and I would make the socket IO of WebRTC. Uh, so off I went, writing code and building a launch site and writing documentation, and two months later, your JS launched on HN. And there was a pretty positive response and a few hundred stars in the repository, and I eagerly answered all the emails, um, and I investigated bugs really thoroughly, and I wrote almost like really long, obnoxiously thankful replies to everyone who emailed in. Like, thanks for using us, you know, let me know if you have any questions, uh, hope this helps with your problem. Um, and in early 2013, PeerJS hit 1,000 stars on GitHub. Uh, yeah, and I was super happy, I was like, yeah, let's have a party. Um, but then this guy tweeted at me, moneyman10k, he said, this is interesting, but now you just need a peer review that isn't stars based. Um, so it was like my life had been turned upside down, you know, life was a lie and stars didn't actually mean anything. I was turned upside down and uh, thought to myself, if only 1,000 stars actually meant my open source library was any good then I really would have made it, but they're not, because Money Man 10K is totally right. My library is totally buggy and fully documented, and that's why people are emailing in all the time. Um, it lacks all the essential features, and I can't believe people are actually using it in production. That's like super scary. Um, yet the few hours that I had to work on it for a week was just not enough to fix all the issues. And from then on, the emails just seemed more daunting. Uh, like X isn't working, Y edge case isn't working, this combination of things doesn't work. Uh, so my answer to questions and bug reports changed from, like, here this is the best, I'll help fix all your problems, to things like this. Can't repro, won't fix. Library isn't meant for that level of abstraction. You should manage IDs yourself if you want to use custom <laughs> names. If you want to do that, you should just run your own servers. Uh, so it became a chore to keep up my domain expertise of WebRTC, or at least I treated it like a chore. Uh, it wasn't even a product I used myself, and peer-to-peer -peer networking wasn't really a topic I wanted to be an expert on. But to be fair, like these are all fair answers to questions. These are answers I see other open source maintainers giving their users all the time. But it really made me sad to give these answers. Because I was really excited to solve all the issues and make the library better. Um, and I found myself hopelessly annoyed every time an email came in. Because most of the time, the user was just doing something wrong. And little things like writing guides I had to do myself, bug fixes I had to do myself. And I often ask myself, why wouldn't anyone help me? Why wouldn't people just like create pull requests and investigate bugs themselves instead of filing them? Um, and I explained it away as, uh, your library has no tests. It's crappy, it has no tests, and no one wants to contribute. Um, but do I write tests, or do I fix bugs, or do I answer the 20 emails that come in per week? Um, I ended up doing most of these things pretty crappily, uh, but I really did want to help people. I wanted to make my library a success. And despite all the emails and all the frustration, it's really rewarding. 
Um, the little things you are able to find time to do, uh, people say, Michelle, thank you so much. You're a lifesaver. And that makes you feel really great inside. And then those moments when real companies ask about your uh, library, like BitPay and NTT from Japan actually use PeerJS, and that's like pretty amazing. Um, so a few weeks ago, I was having coffee with a reporter who was interested in WebRTC, and I had a pretty belated epiphany about open source software. He asked me if I'd heard of like so or so WebRTC library that came out two years ago, and I was like, oh, I don't know. Uh, and he said, wow, really? Everyone knows about that one. It's been around since forever. Um, then he asked about some other WebRTC library that's been in the news lately. And I really don't know that one. And at this point, it's pretty obvious that he lost confidence in my knowledge about WebRTC and my general status as like a domain expert. And that's when I had the epiphany. It didn't bother me that he didn't see me as a domain expert anymore. A year ago, I would have been thrown on my back again and tried my best to learn all the things and become a domain expert again. But now I realize that I maintain PeerJS not because I want to be a domain expert on WebRTC, but just because I think it's really cool technology and I want to help people build on it. So remember my question from earlier about why no one would help me? The answer is probably because they don't feel like they have the domain knowledge to contribute. If you recall, this is the same feeling I had when I was looking at Django, Node.js, and you know, the feeling of being very small and unknowledgeable. Uh, but the truth is, I know just as little as everyone else, and for most questions I'm, I'm asked, I just Google things, I make things up, and say it loudly enough that people believe they're true. Um, I just read code, read documentation, I constantly about log debug. Uh, and I'm realizing this more and more as I'm contributing to various like, rework CSS plugins um, and even our own Stripe open source libraries. No one is really a domain expert. People building rework plugins aren't domain experts on CSS media queries or CSS parsing or CSS colors. They're just people who know how to code and who use these tools and want to make these tools better for everyone else to use. And open source is really more of a community than a group of domain experts building infallible software. In fact, back when I was maintaining Stripe PHP, I'd never even written PHP before, which is arguably a bit of a stretch, but that's the extent to which you don't have to be a domain expert in the subject. So as a final note, I think this tweet is wrong. Stars are actually very important. They make me feel a lot better about maintaining my library. Um, yeah. And so thanks for listening. As a reference, here are the 10 emojis that I use in my <laughs>